All right, thank you, Tolu, for all the updates there. Let's get into the headlines now, see what the papers are saying in Nigeria. And I have with me uh, Chartered Accountant and Public Affairs uh, Analyst, Shesson Kwadi. Shesson, it's nice to have you join me right now. Well done, Mike. Okay, let's get into the papers now. Our first uh, headline we're seeing is from the Daily Sun. And he says, Senators-elect Task Buhari APC demand early directive on new Senate leadership before inauguration. Receive certificates of return. We'll work together for Abia. Kalu is saying that. Uzo Kalu. Now, from uh, the Sun, Daily Sun, let's go to the Punch. The Punch newspaper is our next paper where that says, Ninth National Assembly, deft moves begin over Senate presidency. APC Senators-elect Juan Buhari on zoning. Okay, from the punch, let's go to the vanguard. The vanguard says, uh, presidential poll, APC secures order to inspect materials as a fallout from the presidential election. From the vanguard, let's go to New Telegraph now. The New Telegraph uh, is reporting Lagos building collapse. Woman commits suicide after losing two children. And uh, has multiple riders there saying parents bury their children and health workers extorting us. Uh, that's uh, some of the victims at the hospitals are saying that. And uh, survival, I spent three hours under rubble praying. And my sister's 18-month-old son died in crash, and it's painful seeing my son in critical condition, cries out mother, mom. That's a fallout from uh, the major headline on the New Telegraph. Now from there, let's go to the Daily Times. The Daily Times He's saying, revealed how Senator Obiora got 4.127 billion naira from Malabo oil sleaze uh, to face, face persecution abroad. And Nigerians demand arrest, investigation, and prosecution of those involved. Okay, from the Daily Times, let's go to this day. This day is our last paper for this morning. INEC urges Ninth Assembly to prioritize Electoral Act amendment and has multiple riders there. Uh, present certificate of return to new lawmakers, uh, keep silent on reverse election. NLC demands full autonomy for electoral body and tri uh, tribunal orders commission to allow Buhari APC inspect electoral materials. Okay, that's, uh, that's the headlines uh, this morning. Uh, but Chesson, there's one of the stories that will interest you here is on this day, page 10. I think it talks about human rights. All right, human rights violations still high in Nigeria, says Amnesty. When it comes to human rights, uh, when we hear from uh, Amnesty International or any of these uh, foreign bodies, the government, either the military or the government uh, the, or the police or the judiciary, never really agrees with some of these uh, 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 reports. But what's your assessment? The uh, assessment is... Uh we are not doing enough as regards uh, this uh, aspect. I earlier mentioned in uh, one of our presentation that it's because we hardly give uh, punitive punishment to as many that are committing this atrocity. Look at the incident. We had situation where some of those problems are linked to high flyers and nobody is actually dealing with them. If you leave that of the incident, you go to our young ladies, women, children are being uh, assaulted, raping, and nobody is actually looking in that direction. But even uh, the, the most prominent one, uh, some reports would say government is even one of the biggest culprits when it comes to violation of human rights. Talking about those still in detention, even when the court says uh, they should be released on bail. Yeah, the, the, it's part of the problem and the challenges we have because we hardly follow the law to letter. We have a personal you know, our uh, government overriding the law because we feel we just think the law is really not intact. Uh, and part of what we keep telling you, if you feel the law is not intact, that is where we have the legislative arm. Reamend the law to suit your purpose, to suit what everybody will benefit from. Not when the law says do this, you feel because it's not in your favor, then you're not working well, line with it. What impact would all of this report really have on 
the country like Nigeria, for instance? People won't just have confidence in the governance because if you violate human rights, that means people cannot freely do what they want to do and people cannot have, you know, this sense of belonging and protection as a nation and that, that will impact negatively on the governance of the nation. You think, you think the government is overwhelmed and uh, can't do much when it comes to the rule of law? In, uh, we are not overwhelmed. It's not that we are not putting the right thing at the right place. We are not overwhelmed at any, at any level at any point Nigeria in time. Nigeria has the capacity? We have the capacity to do everything humanly, the, the, the resources needed, both personnel, both machinery and everything. We have it. So it's, it's just that we are will. not putting it, just the will the and will proper re, you know, re reorganization and reorientation of people that will get it right. Okay. We look forward to getting it right. Uh, or let's, let's look at uh, Daily Times. Oh, I think on page 6 on the Daily Times uh, let's see what he's saying here. High wire politics begin over who becomes next in the president. I think we, uh, I, I remember, I think it has uh, Ndume Lawan and three others APC senators in the race will avoid repeat of eighth uh, Senate leadership crisis. <laughs> this is one other debate that is still ongoing and all of that. Now, uh, a lot of, uh, some politicians are saying the dynamics will change and then it will be zoned to uh, the south southeast. Others are saying no, he remains in the, in the north central. Others are saying he has to go to the north northeast this time around. We'll, we'll leave that to the politician to the party to and decide. the party to decide. What we are actually asking for is we were, people believe in the administration of uh, the president, Muhammad Buhari, and they've actually brought him back so that he can do more things. And uh, we will not listen to excuse. Part of the things we had is that the Eighth Assembly never cooperated with the president to allow him to execute most of the things that will favor the, the, the masses. At this point in time, people are crying so that he won't come and give any excuses at any point in time. So get it right. We are not, you, you know, the two arms are to work independently, but harmoniously to deliver to the people. So at this point, in time we want the party leaders we want the president let them work and get the right person that can give direction not that we dance to their tune but they can give direction to the people at the legislative but to work in harmonious yeah, whatever with the president how critical will whoever emerges senate president or leadership of the national assembly how critical would that personality be in the drive of the government towards where the president wants it to go yeah, he, he, must, uh, he, he, has, he has the manifesto of the party at hand and the promises that they've made. So they must synergize. So the person must be well equipped. You know, I, I was reading through the basis at which they appoint Senate President. It must have been a long a serving, high ranking, whatever. Aside that, they should look at the personal quality, the drive that the person can give, and it's at, the level, at that the level of uh, politics. Would they really look at quality or look at uh, zoning system and look at influences amongst or the interests? That Even uh, if you are going to zone, we all know that from a particular zone, you have several people from that area. Each state is having three senators. So out of the three, you should be able to rank. It depends on who, on who is ranking amongst them because if we have from the whole zone, if for instance, if we have all of them coming in <laughs> as first-time senators and it is zoned there, there's nothing anyone can do no, about it. No, I'm sure the party will put those things, in, you know, into we are not politicians, they will put those things into consideration. What we need from them, this night assembly, is to make deliverables, support the president. Areas where they need to check his activity, they should do, but they should give us laws. We have several laws that are pending that needs their they are their assent. They should stop all this drama. This is not the time that they are going to give us drama. We need a leader that will take firm decision and give a direction for this uh, legislative arm, and they can make the executive too to be on their toes and make deliverable to us. Okay. Now, basically, besides supporting the president, in what area do you think the National Assembly should look at? The, the, the amendment of the constitution and some of those pending issues yeah several of it like i said we have the pib bills that they need to really work on the INEC is actually clamoring that they should look into it to amend the electoral act law they they should look at areas where they can protect the children you see this era the, the last admin the night uh, eight assembly was able to say not uh, not too young to rule they should give those open the space 
for young people who have initiated. I expect some of them to even engage some of these young guys, technocrats, who has the wherewithal to make deliverables for them so that we can, you know, the era of leaving things in the hands of the old and allowing the young ones to just float should just be, so they should look for laws that will give good things and people will be better off for All it, right. masses uh, uh, especially. On, on the other hand, uh, there's also the call for the young people to take it up by themselves instead of uh, waiting for the elders to give it to them. But we have to leave it here now. Shesong Kouade, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you, Mike. Thank I appreciate you. it.